What up YouTube, Team Movies here. Now with uh, the new recent uh, horror film that, or I should say horror comedy that just got released, uh, Vampires vs. the Bronx. Uh, so this is a, a horror comedy, it's not really a serious horror, but it's still horror comedy and all. Uh, so this is a horror film that uh, pretty much takes place in uh, New York City. I decided to go ahead and do my top 10 favorite horror movies that takes place here. Because yeah, I, it's always cool seeing horror movies that take place in like, let's say a cabin or a uh, forest or whatnot. But hey, there is always pretty. It is always pretty cool when they do some sort of horror film that you know takes place in New York. Because hey, uh, I guess I can see why they don't really do much because you know there's not really any place around here to uh, like the city is way too big. Like there's not really uh, many places to hide from uh, people and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, with that being said, here's my ten favorite horror films that takes place in New York. All right, number 10 is uh, the horror. Um, we just had a movie called Vampires uh, vs. the Bronx. But, you know, but, like back in the 90s, uh, Wes Craven directed a horror comedy that start, that featured uh, Eddie Murphy in it titled Vampires in Brooklyn. And that's what you pretty much get. It's Vampires in Brooklyn. It's directed by the late, great Wes Craven. You got Eddie Murphy in this. And, I mean, Vampires in Brooklyn, it, it's very cheesy, it's dumb, but it's actually, it's more of a guilty pleasure of mine, to be honest with you, but it's still pretty fun. Uh, I mean, come on, uh, Eddie Murphy, uh, as well of uh, Maximilian, is pretty cool casting. Uh, I mean, Eddie Murphy as a vampire in general, who could ever buy that? Uh, you got Angela Bassett, who was terrific. Uh, the horror aspect was pretty cool, the comedy was cool. I mean, this, if you really want to look at it, this was like technically Eddie Murphy's first horror film. So, whoever could picture Eddie Murphy in a horror film, but that's what you got with Vampires in Brooklyn. Alright, coming in at number 9, I'm going to go with the film Jacob's Ladder. Now, you know, this is about this uh, veteran uh, named uh, Jacob Singer, played by uh, Tim Robbins, who struggles to uh, maintain his uh, sanity and uh, you know, he plays by uh, hallucination and uh, flashbacks. And uh, his... And, uh, you know, he pretty much rapidly, uh, like, falls apart um, as the world and people around him, uh, like, you know, pretty much uh, morph and twist uh, into uh, disturbing images. And so his girlfriend, played by the uh, late uh, Elizabeth uh, Pena and uh, ex-wife uh, Sarah, played by uh, Patricia Camelard, as I'm trying to uh, help. But, you know, uh, there's, like, lots of crazy, uh, creepy stuff that happens with this. J uh, of course, it does take place in New York City. Uh, Jacob Slayer is a really creepy one. Uh, Tim Robbins, of course, best known for uh, films like uh, Shawshank Redemption. Or uh, uh, Robbins was terrific here. You had a, a young Macaulay Coco was in this film. Uh, yeah, it was a really creepy uh, flick. Uh, the hallucinations he has ends up being pretty uh, messed up. Uh, this is also directed by Adrian Aline, who also gave us films like Fair Attraction. Uh, pretty, you know, solid uh, filmmaker. And it takes place in uh, Brooklyn, New York, so there's that. Uh, yeah, if you guys have not really seen uh, Jacob's Ladder yet, definitely give that one a shot. All right, number eight, I'm going to go with the horror film Maniac. Now, this is actually a film that uh, got very controversial when it got released. And, uh, it's pretty much about this uh, this man um, who's a child, um, child abuse, uh, triggers him, uh, and he pretty much uh, grows up to uh, ends up, you know, killing a woman and use her scalp as a dresses for his uh, ma um, for his uh, mannequins. So, yeah, uh, of course, this got a lot of controversy because of you know violence against a woman and all that. But ma the original Maniac, uh, the Elijah Wood one was okay, but the original is really good. Uh, it is pretty violent. Uh, great performances by the lead uh, dude. Uh, the guy will, like. I think it got released in early 1980s, I think 1980 or 1981, around this, um, those years. But this film was really good, was really uh, creepy. I mean, the, the lead dude was one, was one sick dude, but he played the role really well. I mean, if you guys have not really seen the original Maniac yet, definitely give that one a watch. Coming in at number seven, I'm gonna go with the film *Chud*. Now it's about this uh, photographer named uh, George, named uh, George uh, Cooper, played by uh, Home Alone's uh, John Hurd, who is documenting the lives of uh, of like uh, you know, homeless people and all because that's where 
lot of uh, homeless in New York City, so that, that makes sense. It takes place in New York. It's so, a uh, population that uh, has like mysteriously uh, dead and so like you know after uh, receiving information from a uh, report, George ends up becoming aware of a conspiracy theory about uh, cannibalistic uh, monsters lurking in the uh, sewers. Uh, the film also stars a. Uh, um, another Home Alone actor, uh, Dallas Sturt, who actually was one of the uh, writers on this film, so that was pretty cool. Uh, Dallas Sturt actually portrays a priest in this. Uh, Christopher uh, Curry um, portrays a, a policeman who the two end up fighting uh, about, um, about, and of course they try to uh, take down uh, these uh, cannibalistic uh, creatures. Chud is one really uh, messed up horror film. It's a horror comedy if you really want to look at it that way too. Uh, it has a mention, like, the effects, um, at the time was pretty cool. I believe it got released in the early 1980s. It's a really good one. Uh, John Hurd, of course, like I said, he is best known for portraying, uh, Kevin's dad in the Home Alone films. Uh, it is pretty cool to see, uh, him and, uh, Downstairs, who don't really share much, uh, probably any screen time in Home Alone. It was pretty cool seeing them, uh, share screen time in Chud. So, yeah, if you guys have not really seen Chud yet, it's a really... It's kind of a horror film from the 80s that no one really talks about, but it's actually pretty good. Alright, number six, I'm going to go with uh, Cloverfield. Now, this is about a, a group of New Yorkers uh, who enjoys, like, a, a going away uh, party. And during, it's a found footage film, and so during the uh, party, uh, they encounter, like, a, a creature in the sky uh, that's pretty uh, terrifying right there. And... Of course, uh, there have been a few other, uh, like, takes on Cloverfield. Of course, uh, Netflix recently had a uh, Cloverfield uh, feature, which was supposed to go theirs, but it was so terrible, they decided to just release it uh, to Netflix. Of course, uh, the Cloverfield film with uh, John Goodman is a good one. But, you know, the uh, the one that got released in 2007, uh, direct, that was produced by J.J. Abrams, uh, directed by Matt Reeves, who, of course, uh, is giving us the Batman next year. Uh, Cloverfield is a really good one. It's a, probably one of my, um, the coolest sci-fi horror uh, films that got released in recent years. The found footage aspect is pretty cool to watch. It's a really good one. The effects of the monster look pretty good. I mean, whoever, like, they have, of course, had monster movies that, you know, took place in New York City and all. But Cloverfield is hands down a really good one. If you guys have not really seen it, definitely get that one to watch. Dread, they never really uh, did like a actual follow to the original. They, of course, they did uh, the other Cloverfield films, but they didn't really tie in with the original. But uh, anyway, all right, number five, I'm gonna go with. Uh, so I never really considered this should be a horror, like an actual horror, but it has like horror aspects in it. Uh, number five, I'm gonna go with Black Swan. Now, Black Swan, uh, directed by Darren Aronofsky, who's no stranger to the horror genre because, of course, he recently gave us a mother not so long ago. And in it, it stars uh, Natalie Portman, who portrays this uh, ballerina, whose uh, passion for dance rules every uh, f uh, facet of her um, life. And uh, so, like, uh, the company's uh, artistic director, played by Vincent Cassell, decides to uh, pretty much replace... Um, his uh, ballerina for their uh, opening production of Swan Lake, and it, is, uh, and it ends up being his first choice. Uh, but she has a, a new competition who's this a newcomer named Lily, played by uh, Mila Kunis. And the rivalry between uh, the two, you know, transform into like a twisted friendship. And Nina ends up having like a dark side that comes out. I mean, Black Swan, you know, it does have lots of uh, horror aspects, and it's a really uh, cre like. When the swan um, fully comes out, it's really uh, creepy to watch. I, I remember actually watching this back in 2010. Really did not know what to expect out from this film, but it's a really good one. I mean, uh, Natalie Portman, of course, won her first ever Oscar for this. Definitely probably one of uh, the best performances she's ever given, really. Vincent Cassell was great. Barbara Hershey um, was terrific in this. If you guys have never really seen uh, Black Swan yet, it's a really nice one. All right, coming in at all right, coming in at uh, number four. All right, now this might be a bit of a shake because they don't even go uh, like fully come to New York City until like towards you know really the end and all, or towards the middle I should say. Number four, I'm gonna go with Jason Takes Manhattan. Now, like I said, majority of the film mostly takes place on like a crew, like on a uh, mainly on a boat. So they don't really, like, they're, of course, you know, coming to uh, New York City and all that. 
And on the boat, of course, uh, our old friend uh, Jason Voorhees is on the boat, uh, you know, terrorizing them and all that. And yeah, the whole film, like, the, beside, despite it being called Jason Takes Manhattan, the whole film does not really, they don't really get you Manhattan until like towards the uh, final act. So yeah, the, the tower is a bit of, uh, yeah, the tower um, is a bit misleading, but still. I always got kicked out Jason Takes uh, Manhattan. You know, it's a really fun uh, one. I mean, it's a bit cheesy, yeah, but man, uh, you got um, Kane Hodder portraying the role of Jason, who I think he is definitely one of the best portrays of Jason we've ever had. You know, uh, when they get you in uh, New York, I mean, it's pretty cool seeing Jason uh, roam around Times Square. Uh, that was pretty cool to watch. I mean, it's pretty uh, interesting to see uh, what New York City was like in late 1980s and all. Uh, yeah, it's a really cool one. Uh, if you guys have never really seen Jason Takes Manhattan yet, you know, lots of people probably consider it to be, consider it to be uh, the worst of the uh, Friday 13th films, but I've always got kicked out of it. So definitely go check out Jason Takes Manhattan if you guys haven't seen it. I mean, I always quite like the uh, majority of most Friday 13th films. They're, you know, pretty fun uh, and all. Uh, coming in at number three, I'm gonna go with I Am Legend. Now, I guess you can see, now if you really want to look at it, this is considered more of an action um, film more than a uh, strap horror, but it has horror aspects to it. Of course, uh, you know this ends up. This of course uh, stars uh, Will Smith as uh, Robert Neville, who's this uh, brilliant uh, scientist and the uh, only uh, man in uh, New York City. Uh, and there's like pretty much uh, vampires that's around. Uh, that's you know terrorizing. Uh, that's pretty much, uh, you know, terrorizing and all that. Uh, and, of course, uh, he ends up being the only person in New York City, which I gotta say, that probably would be um, pretty cool. I mean, technically with the uh, pandemic, uh, when the pandemic first happened, when you go down Times Square, it totally literally feels like a real-life I Am Legend. Like, I'm not even joking. Uh, but, of course, um, it's only Will Smith and a, uh, like, a dog feature in this. Uh, you had a few other cast members that uh, are, like, featured mostly in flashbacks, like uh, Alice Braggers um, in this. You've got uh, Will Smith's real-life dog, Will Smith. I mean, yeah. Uh, I'm Legend is a really awesome, uh, fun film to watch. Uh, you know... I mean, this film uh, shows, like, uh, you know, what it would be like to be the only person in uh, New York City and all. And it's really cool. Uh, you know, probably one of Will Smith's best performances. It is based on a book. Uh, it was also the film that technically, uh, that pretty much uh, teased, um, like, pretty much predicted Batman vs. Superman, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, if you guys never really seen I Am Legend, definitely give that one a watch. All right, number two, I'm gonna go with Rosemary's Baby. Now, of course, uh, you know, this, of course, takes place in a uh, New York City um, apartment, and uh, you've got uh, Mia Farrow, who portrays this character, um, who portrays this woman named Rosemary Woodhouse, and her uh, struggling actor husband, a guy played by John Cassavetes, ends up moving into a uh, New York City apartment, and turns out she's, of course, uh, Rosemary is, you know, pregnant, uh, but with, uh, we're pretty much uh, Satan's uh, child. I mean, it, Rosemary's Baby is one of the most iconic horror films of the 1970s. Uh, um, you know, it was directed by, uh, you know, by uh, Ron Blansky, who, of course, his name alone is a bit awkward and all that. Uh, but despite, you know, his, uh, like, you know, him being a sicko and all, he's still always been a pretty solid uh, filmmaker. But anyway, I really got to kick out Rosemary's Baby. It is creepy, uh, terrifying. Uh, Mia Farrow and uh, John uh, Cassavetes both had uh, pretty solid performances in this. It's a really awesome one. Uh, I mean, of course, uh, it mostly takes place in like inside a New York City apartment, but it still takes place in New York City. So, yeah, uh, I mean, this literally takes place at uh, West uh, Seven. Uh, Seven Second Ashley, which is interesting right there. What are the problem that uh, Rosemary's Baby problem is still here? But anywho, uh, yeah, definitely go check out Rosemary's Baby if you guys never seen that one. All right, number one, I'm gonna go with the horror comedy of satire, American Psycho. Of course, uh, this is you know based on the uh, Brett Easton, uh, 
Alice Nava, starring uh, Christian Bell as a role of her, Patrick uh, Bateman. You got Mary uh, Heron, who also gave us a uh, Pet Cemetery as the uh, director of this. Uh, I mean, this movie pretty much makes you wonder what are those uh, Wall Street dramas um, are fantasizing about while uh, sitting uh, in their uh, top uh, pals, that's the, uh, you know, glass uh, top, that's the center. And Christian Bell, I mean, he plays the psycho character of Patrick Bateman really well. Uh, you also had the likes of uh, other folks in this. You include, um, you had uh, William Dafoe was in this, uh, Jared Leto, Reese Witherspoon. I mean, American Psycho is... It's more of a horror comedy than straight up serious horror, but it's still really this one. It is very violent. Uh, Christian Bell, you know, before he became uh, the Batman, uh, he became uh, Patrick Bateman, and what a really cool character he played. Uh, yeah, the violence in this thing was really fun to watch. Uh, of course, like I said, it does take place, fully take place in New York City, so there's that. Uh, but yeah, if you guys have never really seen American Psycho yet, have to give it a shot. I mean, the movie literally turns about, boy, American Psycho is literally 20 years old this year. Just wrapped that around head. But anyway, uh, yeah, definitely go check out American Psycho if you guys ever seen that. Alright. Uh, that's pretty much it. Let me do the quick rundown. 10 Vampires of Brooklyn, 9 Jacob's Ladder, 8 Maniac, 7 Chud, 6 Cloverfield, uh, 5 Black Swan, four Jason Takes Manhattan, three I Am Legend, two Rosemary's Baby, and number one is uh, America Psycho. Uh, let me, you know, there's not really a whole lot I can really think of to be honest with you. Uh, let me leave you guys. Uh, what are some of your favorite horror films that takes place in New York City? Drop comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. This here, see movies signing off.